Hi YouTube, wanted to share my experience with you. I just got my Kudo 3D Titan and I thought I would uh, do a little unboxing and assembly video for you here. Uh, it came in two boxes. You can see the first box here. This includes the uh, post printing curing unit and uh, the resins that I purchased. I added on two bottles of uh, the Maker Juice resin, one in black, one in red. Hopefully these uh, resins will get me started and I can start printing some stuff right away. Opening the second box, this is what you can see. Uh, there's a typical tray above the unit. Um, this tray uh, includes the, um, the two print platforms. Uh, you can see they're on a, a nice ball joint there. Um, some cleaning tools, a, a brush, a blower, a screwdriver, um, the electronics kit. Uh, here you can see the unit underneath the tray. The frame is about the size of a full-size ATX case. Uh, there's another slim pizza box looking cardboard box on the inside. It includes some of the accessories and the acrylic sheets for the cover. Uh, here's everything laid out uh, on my kitchen table. Uh, this assembly, um, I didn't know how long it was going to take so I thought I would uh, start taking some photos. Uh, I've got everything laid out here from the uh, leveling feet on the left, uh, the fan, the power supply, some cables, uh, calibration unit. Uh, here are the acrylic pieces for the cover. Uh, interestingly, the acrylic pieces are cut with a nice bevel, so uh, that will allow assembly into that diamond shape on top. Uh, here are some uh, other components. Interestingly, they combined uh, finishing tools like the pliers uh, with assembly tools like the wrenches um, uh, and the scraper. I, I don't know. It, I guess wherever you get it from, you just stick it all in there. Uh, here's the uh, main unit. Um, uh, I was surprised all the components fit in such a small box. It's because they uh, they ship with all the components all packed within each other. It's nice and compact, uh, pretty efficient use of space. Um, the chassis is built using a T-slot aluminum extrusion frame with uh, sheet metal pieces uh, that snap in or are screwed into place over the T-slot. Uh, here you can see the back with the cover or the front with the cover removed. Um, the the covers are nice uh, formed and anodized black aluminum um, or they appear to be aluminum and uh, here you can see how all the the components including the projector are nested inside uh, these are the two resin trays uh, they're dust sensitive so I didn't want to mess with those I put those away um, you can see the projector there I'm gonna unbox that here in a second uh, it appears to be an Acer H65108D 1080p DLP projector. Um, it comes in a nice nylon case on the inside, but I'm uh, not going to need that again. Uh, here you can see the frame. Again, it's all T-slot, uh, aluminum T-slot. Here are the leveling feet that screw into the bottom of the frame. Not super attractive, but uh, they'll get the job done. They just uh, screw up and down and you use those nuts to uh, lock them in place. They have uh, nylon uh, pads on the bottom so it shouldn't scratch up your desk or anything uh, once you get it put together. Uh, you'll probably want to um, put down some kind of pad uh, underneath the unit while you're assembling it because you're going to be flipping it around upside down left and right. Um, I used a couple of uh, cutting boards. Uh, here's that tray again. Uh, if you remove that top piece of padding you can see the linear rail. That's the, uh, uh, the z-axis on this printer. Uh, it's actually the only moving part in the printer, and it's a high-precision linear actuator. Uh, it uses a stepper motor. You can see um, the uh, uh, linear screw isolation spring right there. So that, uh, that isolates the, um, the axis of movement from the motor from the uh, linear screw. Uh, you can see here I've attached the, the z-axis to the back of the frame. Uh, this is probably one of the trickier parts of, of assembly because you have to get everything lined up just right. Uh, this is the back plate. It supports that z-axis from the outside. I think it actually makes more sense um, to attach this to the outside of the frame before you tighten the screws on the, the, 
the linear um, movement, the z-axis. So go ahead and assemble uh, this back plate with the screws and the t-slot the nuts. Leave everything loose when you attach the uh, linear rail for the z-axis and use this back plate as a guide uh, for where to position the vertical z-axis rail. It'll make it a lot easier to line things up just right. Otherwise, uh, chances are you'll put that vertical actuator in the wrong location and you'll end up having to take it apart and put it back together anyway. Here you can see the first time I tried to put it together, uh, the linear actuator rail is off-center. So I had to uh, loosen the screws for that and put it back together. Here it is after I've reassembled it. It's nice and centered. Everything fits together right. Uh, none of the screws are uh, uh, tilted or off-axis. Here's the electronics bag for the ramps controller. It's just a standard Arduino uh, Mega 2560 plus um, a ramps controller that goes on top. Um, interesting that they chose to use this because uh, you only need one stepper controller. Um, the ramps supports up to five, so clearly the, the from an electronic standpoint this is overkill, but I'm sure they chose to use this because it's pretty standard for uh, 3D printer control and um, it, it has more than what you need for this printer, but uh, you'll have no issues with firmware size fitting into the CPU flash um, and you know that it'll be well supported by standard 3D printing applications. Uh, here you can see the stepper motor from the Z-axis poking through the top shield there and uh, it's connected up to the ramps controller. Uh, here's a big fan that you mount on the side. Uh, wasn't sure exactly where to put this, the directions are pretty vague. Um, but if you line it up with that clip, it just it ends up in the right place. Um, wasn't quite sure what to do with these wires either. The um, uh, the pins coming out of this thing are, are a little pigtail, just a Y connector there, but it, it ends up working just fine. Here's the mounting plate for the projector and the electronics. You can see there's uh, a few holes in the bottom of the projector, uh, clearly made for some kind of mounting plate and uh, the screw holes from the plate just line up right and then you use some M3 screws to tighten those up. Um, you want to connect the cables to the projector before you mount it. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, serial cable, power cable, and um, HDMI cable. Um, here's the projector after it's been mounted to that plate. Uh, and here are the cables from the fan uh, mounted to the ramps controller. These are just in the order of following the instructions from Akuto 3D. Would have been nice to have the instructions in the box. Uh, as it was, I had to download the instructions from a, uh, their website as a PDF. The instructions also suggest moving that mounting plate upwards a little bit, so I, I went ahead and did that. Uh, no clear instructions on how high I'm supposed to mount that thing, so I'm curious to see where that ends up going. Uh, I suspect during the calibration I'll, I'll be moving the whole projector rail upwards and downwards. Um, here's the attachment point for the, uh, uh, I don't know what you call this thing, it's a bracket that holds the print platform. It attaches to that vertical rail. Uh, I found it easier to install. It's got four screws there. It's hard to line those up. If you lay the printer on the back, uh, it's really easy to get that mounted right. Then you can just tip it forward. Uh, again, and then attach the uh, the print platform. It's got that uh, that ball joint there that allows you to level uh, the print platform quite easily. Uh, I'm not sure why you need the ball joint. I would think the the movement would be pretty repeatable, um, not necessary. But uh, here are the acrylic pieces for the cover. Um, I was a little bit worried about this because. Uh, I don't know about you, but this looks like it's going to be really hard to put together for me. Uh, I, I was really afraid that there would be some solvent glue or something like that that I would have to use, uh, which would be really messy, but they give you this roll of tape. Uh, I've never seen this kind of tape before. It's very thick. Um, it, it's easily a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, it's definitely a gap-filling, stretchable uh, tape, and it's very thin. It's about three millimeters wide. Uh, you uh, apply it to the edges of the acrylic sheet and 
Um, I ended up using about half the roll, so there's there's plenty left over if, if you make any mistakes. Um, and then you just join the pieces together. Uh, the instructions, um, I, di I didn't really follow the instructions for putting this together. I, I, it looked like it would require too much manual dexterity, so I kind of figured out my own way to, to support these pieces while doing so. Um, I started off doing it in the order that they suggested, and this is where I deviate here. I end up putting the Pentagon piece on the front next. Um, that seemed to help solidify the, the shape and uh, make the whole thing a lot more stable um, instead of having pieces floating off in the sky and having uh, additional people required to support parts that were unsuspend that were just suspended from one side. It's a whole lot easier to attach this pentagon to the front. Now you have a sturdy box. You can see the last seam coming together here. Uh, once this front piece is on, now you have four walls and it stands up by itself. You can attach the top pieces, no problem. Um, it, it does have some very uh, uh, interesting mitered cuts for all these pieces to come together and make a tight uh, fit. Um, there, there are no gaps in the seams at all. It, it comes together very nicely. Um, the, the tape, because it's so thick, also seals those uh, seams pretty well. Here, here you can see the last triangle piece just fitting in uh, quite nicely. Um, I would say that I wouldn't want to put this together myself. You know, it's I I don't know that I wanted to to really put this much uh, precise uh, work into getting this thing working. But in the end, it wasn't all that bad. It, it probably took about half an hour to build the uh, the cover. Uh, I was surprised that there are a few gaps in the corners. Uh, the pieces don't come together perfectly. And um, I was a little bit worried there at first that light would be leaking through there. Um, but really, you know, it's not a laser-based system. It's a projector-based system. So there's no dangerous light coming out of this thing. Uh, it, the, the, the acrylic cover needs to block uh, 400 nanometer to prevent the resin from setting up. Uh, so here you can see the cover on top, and it would prevent uh, that wavelength of light from reaching the resin, prematurely hardening it. Uh, but there's there's nothing to protect uh, from an environmental standpoint. You don't you don't need to keep this light out of your eyes. You know you're not going to burn your retinas or anything like that. But you can see it it looks great. It's about the the black part is about the size of a full size PC, uh, and then you've got the orange cover on top that just about doubles its size. Uh, the orange cover is wider than the, the than the base, so keep that in mind. Uh, the one downside of this design is definitely cable management. Uh, there really isn't any. Uh, there's just a big horde of cables that comes out of a big hole in the back, and uh, they kind of leave you to your own devices to uh, figure out what to do with those. Um, hopefully uh, I'll get some printing videos put together here shortly, and I'll post those as well. And um, for now, just wanted to show you guys how easy it was to put this thing together. Thanks.